it seems that every time I end up working with a client, one of two things happen. Either A, they call and we dive straight into touring new construction neighborhoods and builders, or B, we start looking at resales, but by the time we're absolutely exhausted with trying to find the right fit, we end up going to new construction anyway. Now that's not always the case, but it's happened enough to spark the idea for this video and in the always changing debate between going resale or new construction. So let's go dive into it right now. All right, so before we begin, because we do have a lot to cover, let's go ahead and lay out what we're gonna be covering in this video. Is there a difference in insurance costs between new construction and resale? And if so, how much? We'll touch on the benefits and drawbacks of how turnkey each property is. We'll dive deep into the added benefits you receive with new construction, such as warranties and incentives, and also cover which one may be a better investment opportunity. Hopefully when this video is all wrapped up and done, you'll have a much better understanding as to what your game plan should be when making that move to the Florida East Coast. Now let's go ahead and squash the first debate, which goes over the location of resales versus new construction. I mean, location really is the most important factor, right? Well, yes, but in this stretch of the East Coast, it consists mostly of smaller towns. So my hometown of Vero Beach, for instance, where we are, the new construction communities in North Vero up near 65th Street, like High Point and Lost Tree may seem like an issue when looking at a map, but once you realize that you're only 15 minutes away from everything you need, that it quickly stops being an issue and those deals start looking sweet. This is vastly different than choosing to live in the suburbs when moving to a big city like Orlando, Miami, or Tampa, where you can be up to 45 minutes to an hour away from the area that you moved there for. Palm Bay and Melbourne are similar in this aspect because they fall into that smaller town category without any major city to piggyback off of. This means for all of the major draws in Vero Beach, such as the downtown area with the whole historic district down one avenue, to Ocean Drive, the main heartbeat of our central beach area, the airport where they are adding more and more stops by the month and Breeze Airways is get, having a lot of slam dunk reviews by the way and the variety of shopping areas and plazas scattered throughout the city it really just makes just about anywhere where you look as a winner as long as Vero Beach is written in your address it really levels the playing field no matter where you live because all the essential stores are scattered throughout the whole city so with all things considered unless walkability to downtown or Ocean Drive is important all the new construction options we have blend in nicely with the resale locations because Vero is such a decentralized city. All right, so now that we've absolutely squashed the location debate, let's go ahead and touch on the added benefits going with a builder rather than picking a resale. So first one is going to be the fact that new construction homes are turnkey, ready to go the day of closing. Sure, you might wanna sweep up some of the leftover dust that the construction crews have left behind, but you can rest assured after your blue tape walkthroughs are finished and you get those keys at closing, all you really need to do is add your personal touches to the home. Maybe add a couple paddle fans, slap on some paint and bring in your furniture. Contrary to resales, where you now have to pull out that long list from the home inspector and cross off everything on the list before any kind of relaxation is allowed. This then carries over to worrying about that 10 year old AC system, which past inspection, but is making some funky noises or that refrigerator where the bottom panel just fell off after opening it for the first time. For Mica countertops, old dishwasher, older sink, very scratched. Very old range. Buy Frigidaire and then I Frigidaire fridge. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm just halfway joking about some of the horror stories I've heard when the inspector doesn't catch everything. And don't worry, we've got the best in the business if you still like resales. Also not to mention, nobody has matching paint anymore to patch those holes left in the drywall. So either there's leftover screws that need patching and painting this all adds up on top of that smell the pet ferret left behind in the guest bedroom yikes another added benefit to new construction is the warranty so most builders will either do a 1 2 10 style warranty while others will offer a 1 5 10. so this means for one year they will cover the workmanship of the house addressing anything that wasn't caught in the initial blue tape walkthrough it often covers issues like paint drywall and stucco work two to 
five years for the systems in the house. So this part usually covers the major systems within the home, like heating and air conditioning, plumbing, and electrical systems. So the idea is to protect the homeowners from significant system failures that aren't due to normal wear and tear. And 10 years for the structural issues, which typically applies to major structural components of the home. This can include the foundation, roof framing, load bearing walls, and other structural elements of the house. Now resales, they fall short in this aspect because remember that inspector we were talking about earlier? Yeah, he's the only barrier you have between the problems that the home currently has and what you will need to live with after closing. If something slips past him, you're not able to call anyone after the fact to address an issue found in your home. It's your problem now. Now listen, this isn't to say that I haven't seen people do the right thing after closing. So I myself have reached into my pocket to make a client happy and so have the listing agents after the fact. But the true way to handle these issues properly is to negotiate after the inspections have been finished to get these issues addressed. That's why you need a good third party representative having your back during these transactions with the proper inspectors watching over you and a realtor who will go up to bat to get you the credits that you deserve. So you can always feel free to reach out to us anytime and we'd be happy to help. Also, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It honestly means the world to me when you guys do that. Now let's go ahead and change things up a bit and cover a very important topic that is hard to change after the fact, and that is floor plans. So now, of course, start with new construction because they go above and beyond when it goes to the research of what people are looking for. So times are changing and honestly, we're growing more and more into a consumer heavy population. In layman's terms, that just means we've got more stuff. So now what you guys call a basement, we in Florida call swimming pools. So for you science nerds out there, that's because the high water table that's in the state of Florida. So how we work around that is by these really cool inventions called three car garages. This allows for one extra space while not interfering with your two car garage space. So others who are disciplined enough to get rid of their extra stuff when they move may want this extra spot for a small boat, a jet ski, golf cart, four wheeler, you name it. This plays in favor of new construction because that is what they are focusing on the most. The difference between the under air square footage and under roof square footage is getting larger and larger by the year. We are seeing extra storage spaces, bigger garages, and more. This is not to mention the open concepts that we see along with, you guessed it, walk-in closets. So it seems that everyone has an outfit for every occasion these days. So a few more things worth mentioning are the higher ceilings that every builder is jumping on nowadays. So this either comes in the form of higher ceilings throughout with tree ceilings as a feature to raise them even higher, but these are mainly or normally found in the tier two builders or the luxury builders in the area. So budget builders are hopping on the trend as well, but they have a more cost effective approach with vaulted ceilings. So this raises your ceiling height in your living areas and kitchen without breaking the bank. Other areas where we can see times are changing are with split floor plans. So where I know it's not necessarily a new concept, but it's something worth mentioning. And one of my favorites, an island in the open kitchen. So I don't know about you, but our dining room never gets used. And the preference is, is just sitting at these island bar stools that we've got here just to sit down and have a meal. So something about it just fits better for us. And I've noticed the same thing while speaking with you guys. Now these older homes, I don't wanna rip them too hard, but there's some funky stuff I've seen in my years of doing this. So we've already touched on the low ceilings, the lack of garage space, but to add to that even more, I've seen a ton of homes that have closed in garages to allow for an extra bedroom, closed in Florida rooms, and God only knows if these additions were done with a permit at the time. This not only makes the buyer uneasy about the quality of the craftsmanship, but can also affect the ability to get a loan on the home and increase the ability that insurance companies won't touch the house since they've been tightening up their restrictions on that sort of thing. All things to consider. All right, so now let's cover some of the obvious things along with something else you may not have thought about. So getting to select your own finishings and flood zones. 
So the easy one is the finishings. With new construction, a lot of these builders have a design studio where you can completely deck out your new home with everything you've ever wanted. They'll have different levels of countertops, cabinets, flooring, backsplash, shower tile, and anything else that you could imagine. And if it sounds costly to you, what I want you to think about is with resales, you not only have the cost of materials to think about, but also the labor required to rip out that old countertop, cabinets, and etc. This can increase the cost of rehabbing your older home versus what you would simply pay once to have your preferred options put into a new home. Also, coming from a guy that's flipped a few houses, there's always a few surprises waiting for you that you don't expect when tearing out that old stuff. It's just the nature of the beast. Now let's go ahead and touch on the flood zone. So one of the beautiful things about new construction is the fact that most, if not all new construction homes you will see in this area are not in a flood zone after the updated elevation is sent over to FEMA. This is because the builders are required to bring in a certain amount of fill that lifts the home up above the flood zones, resulting in you not needing to worry or carry that flood insurance. This is also true for an entire neighborhood. So not only are they lifting the homes up, they're also bringing in fill to the entire neighborhood, which includes the street. This means during a serious hurricane, your home is simply not an island where you cannot leave. Your whole street is lifted up high enough so you have one less thing to worry about in your new home. This also is the case for Sea Glass by GHO, which we spoke about a couple weeks ago, where the homes are on the barrier island, which most think is an automatic flood zone, but it's actually not. Now let's go ahead and address some of the calls I've been receiving quite a bit in regards to the prices dropping. So no, we are not seeing a softening in the market just yet. What we are seeing, however, is a builder-wide lowering in prices on inventory that will be available within the next few weeks. This is exactly what companies do towards the end of the year, and new home builders are not exempt from that. So very similar to what we see with Black Friday deals, builders will offer a year in incentive or price reductions to add extra revenue to their annual numbers. This may have an appearance of a softening market, but what it truly is is an opportunity for you, the buyer, to snag a great deal on a new home that's ready to go. Now, I know this video has seemed pretty darn one-sided, so let's go ahead and give the old timers a chance here. One of my favorite things about new construction is the fact that you can create what Meet Kevin likes to call a wedge deal. This means the property values in the neighborhood are up here, but you have the opportunity to purchase a home at a valuation down here. This can be done because of condition, too many personal touches that turn other buyers off, and a plethora of other reasons. You also have the ability to negotiate twice. So once when you make the initial offer on the home, and again on the back end after the inspections have been completed. This win compared to new construction generally can make resales a better investment if you know what you're doing. Another big deal is the landscape. So with newer homes, they typically clear the entire lot. That means that oak trees, pine trees, cabbage palms, and just about everything else needs to go to make room for that new home. With older homes, more time has passed, and this can make for a much more appealing street when compared to the stripped down version that these builders make. But guess what? There's more. All right, so there's no doubt that builders are running a business, and since there is a shortage of inventory out there, it only makes sense to build more HOA neighborhoods with those zero lot lines. So this way they can capitalize on their investments further and sell as many homes per acre as possible. So some of these new construction neighborhoods, you can't even fit a lawnmower in between them, and you can have a conversation with your neighbor by simply opening up your windows. That is not an ideal situation in my book. This one compared to older neighborhoods, the the builders and the county seem to agree more that more space is better. So more room for the kids to run around in, more fenced in space for the dogs, and you get that added benefit of shade where we were discussing earlier because of the mature landscaping. So another dig on the new construction is the flip-flop floor plan. So these guys will build the same three to four floor plans throughout an entire neighborhood, flip the floor plans around and act like they did something different. So maybe a different style of shutters and a change of the shade of gray that it's painted, but that's about it. So with older homes, you have a much more custom touch to East House because not only did they build them different back then, you've also had years of additions and customizations on your side to really break the barrier between you and your neighbors. Okay, now one last thing and then I promise I'm done. 
Maybe. <laughs> and it may be the biggest downside to building new construction yet, depending on your situation, and that is permitting. So you see, any River County's greatest characteristic is also its biggest downfall for realtors like me, and that's the fact that they are absolute sloths in the building department. It's like that scene in the DMV in Zootopia, and we have to suffer because of it. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. So when you get your initial plans in, it can take up to six months for the county to approve your initial permits. This usually results in build times taking over a year, which can completely count out new construction for most people. Unless of course you want to purchase a spec home with selections already pre-selected from the builder. They usually do not release these spec homes before sale until they're well underway with their construction process. So a little backstory on this, my wife and I decided they signed a contract to build a new home in 2020. And with all the craziness that was going on at the time, it took two full years for us to receive the keys to that new home. Luckily for us, prices had gone up quite a bit in those two years, leaving us with a ton of equity at closing, but that was a freak instance that is likely never going to happen again in the near future. I wish I would have bought more, to be honest. All right, so back to new construction perks, and then we'll wrap up this video with some of my... Th so first up, our roofs are a huge issue right now in Florida. With most insurance companies wanting these large fifteen dollars to $20,000 investments replaced every 10 years. There are exceptions to that though, so for just a couple thousand dollars more, you could put on a metal roof which greatly impacts the span the insurance companies give you for your coverage. All of this is to say is that when you go new, that means that everything is new. They're giving you new AC units, new appliances, new garage doors, new windows, and yes, new roofs. This is the reason why it's so easy to get coverage on these homes, and the rates are always more affordable than the resales out there. This is not only because everything is new, but they're built up to the most current building codes, and the old saying is, they don't build them like they used to, is true, and that's actually a good thing. These savings not only reflect on your insurance bill, but also in your energy costs as well. So builders like to add in extras like spray foam and insulation, impact windows and doors, high efficiency AC units, and all of these in return help you to lower your monthly bill when compared to older homes with more inefficiencies. So guys, there you have it, new homes versus resales. We went into some pretty interesting details and I'm always curious to hear your thoughts about these kind of videos. So please feel free to comment down below and let me know which one that you prefer and why. And I'll be excited to engage with you guys down there. Also again, regardless of what you prefer, my team and I will be able to happy to help you with your journey of finding your Florida East Coast home. So feel free to reach out to me or check out our website which is fleastcoast.com. We're always updating the data on there and I love seeing how it helps you guys. Until next time, you have a great rest of your day. Bye. If you're up near 65th Street, like High Point, didn't sound very good. So no, we are not seeing another airplane. And since there's a shortage of it, probably shouldn't chew gum while doing this.